Okay, so let's try to understand how to reconstruct S. So let's go back to our, our example from before, where we were working over three qubits. Our S was 1, 0, 1. Now remember, what we get as a result of the Fourier sampling is a random Y such that y dot s is zero. So, so what does this mean? Well, what we are saying is y1 s1 plus y2 s2 plus y3 s3 is zero mod two. Right, so working modulo two means we are dropping all the carries. So what are all the y's that satisfy this condition when s is one zero one? Well, so you can work through the, the y's. So we are picking, if s is this, then y must be either 0, 0, 0, or 0, 1, 0, or 1, 0, 1, or 1, 1, 1. Because, for example, if y was, if i was 1, 0, 0, then y1, s1 would be 1 and the other two would be 0, so the sum mod 2 would be, would be 1. So now what we are going to do is we are going to pick, we are going to sample y many times. We are going to run this procedure several times and each time we get a linear equation and so we sample an appropriate number of times and, and then solve these equations to figure out what s is. And of course in the sampling we would like to get independent equations so we can we can actually solve them and, and, and pin down what S is. So let's, let's pick Y at random twice in this case. So what, ha what happens? Well, le let's say we, you know, uh, when we sample, well, Y, the, the first sample was 1, 0, 1. And let's say just to make things a little bit more non-trivial for ourselves, we say that the second sample was 1, 1, 1. So now we have our equations. Remember, S is now unknown. We, we, you know, we, we happen to know this is the example, but we are still solving for it. So we have, we write out our first equation with y1, and we say 1 times S1 plus 0 times S2 plus 1 times S3 is 0. We are working modulo 2, of course, but um, that's implicit, let's say. And then 1 times S1 plus 1 times S2 plus 1 times S3 equal to, zero, equal to 0 as well. That's the second equation. So how do we solve it? Well, you know, the usual way we solve simultaneous equations. So what would we do? We'd subtract the first equation from the second one, and we'd get um, S2 is equal to 0. That's, that's if we, uh, we, we'd get... Uh, 1 times s2 equal to 0. And then we could look at this first equation by itself, and it says s1 plus s3 equal to 0. OK, so what, what are the solutions of these two equations simultaneously? Well, obviously, we must have s2 equal to, equal to 0. And this is telling us that s1 equal to s3. So there are, that you could either have, so there are two solutions s1 equal to s3 equal to 0 and s2 equal to 0 or s1 equal to s3 equal to 1 and s2 equal to 0. And since we assumed that s was non-zero, we can eliminate that solution. And so we, we've, reconstru we've reconstructed the, uh, the secret s, which is uh, 1, 0, 1. Now let's figure out how we would do this in general. So now we are working with n bits, and we are sampling the, you know, the Fourier sampling gives us a random y such that y dot s equal to 0, meaning y1 s1 plus y2 s2 plus yn sn is 0, always mod 2. Now, if we were to sample n minus 1 times, so, so suppose we, so here's our procedure. We'll, we are going to 
sample n minus 1 times and we'll hope that we get independent linear equations in the s sub i's and we solve for s. Now we have n unknowns and n minus 1 equations so and, and we are working mod 2 so, so we'll get two solutions. Now one solution we'll always get is s equal to 0 and this we want to, to discard, s equal to all zeros, n zeros. This we want to discard because we know s is non-zero so we'll take the other solution. Okay so let's figure out the probability that this algorithm succeeds. So this is the probability that when we sample n minus time, 1 times then we get independent linear equations. So let's do this one at a time. So, so let's, let's see. So we sample our first y and then what are the ways of failing? Well the only way we could fail is if we get the all zero string in which case you know it's a trivial equation. So what's the probability of fail? Or probability of uh, failure? Well remember y was picked uniformly random from 2 to the n minus 1 different strings and so this probability of failure is 1 over 2 to the n minus 1. So the probability that so far we are independent is 1 minus 1 over 2 to the n minus 1 at least for this step. Now we pick y2. When do we fail? Well we fail if we are de dependent which means either if y2 was the all zero string or if it was y1. So there are two ways of failing. The probability of failure is 2 divided by 2 to the n minus 1. Probability we are still independent is we, you know, is 1 minus 1 over 2 to the n minus 2. So the probability we are independent in the first two steps would be 1 minus 1 over 2 to the n minus 1 times 1 minus 1 over 2 to the n minus 2. Okay, what's the probability our third choice is independent? Well, again, how do we fail? Well, we fail if we got the all zero string, if we got y1, if we got y2. But now there's one more way of failing, which is if we got y1 plus y2. So there are four different ways of failing. So probability of failure is 4 divided by 2 to the n minus 1. And so the probability our third choice is independent, given that the first two were, is 1 minus 1 over 2 to the n minus 3. So we just keep going like this. What's the chance that our n minus first choice is independent? Well, how do we fail? We fail if we have 0, y1, y2, etc. all the way through all the possible sums, you know, y1 plus y2, y1 plus y2 plus y3, all possible such sums. So how many, how many such, what's the cardinality of this set? Well, it's exactly 2 to the n minus 2. So it's all possible subsets of the first n minus 2 elements. So there are 2 to the n minus 2 of them. So the probability of failure is 2 to the n minus 2 divided by 2 to the n minus 1, which is a half. So the probability independent is 1 minus 1 over 2, which is a half. And so what's the probability we, all our steps are independent, that we, that we pick a completely independent sample? Well, it's, it's the product of all these. So it's 1 over 2 times 3 over 4 times 7 over 8 times so on, all the way up to the last term is 1 minus 1 over 2 to the n minus 1. 
Okay, so what's this? What's this product turn out to be? Well, you can act, it, you can actually figure it out in close form. Mathematicians have, and it's something like point two eight eight seven eight dot dot dot. Something called a Q series. It's too complicated for us to go into. But the other way we can do it is, we could say, well. Let's look at the worst case. Let's look at every possible way we could fail. How many ways are there we could fail? Well, we, we could fail in the last step with probability half, in the, in the second last step with probability one quarter, one over, one over eight, and so on, up to one over two to the n minus one. So we could just add up these probabilities of failure and say, what's the chance that we fail at any step? Well, it's half plus, at most half plus a quarter plus one eighth and so on. And what does this series converge to? Well, it converges to, you know, this sum, we know it's a geometric series. This, this sum is equal to one minus one over two to the n minus one. So that's the chance of failure. It's the chance of failure is at most this much. So the probability of success is at least one over two to the n minus one. Now, that's not very good. So is there something we can do to improve it? Well, yes, we can, we can improve it by, by saying, what's the chance that we, we fail in all the steps except the last one? Let's stop one step early and say, what's the chance we got an independent set of um, linear equations all the way up through everything except the last step? Well, now, when we sum these, this geometric series, quarter plus one over eight and so on, it's half as much as we had before. So this geometric series is going to sum up to at most, so let's, let's try this again. So this geometric series sums to at most one quarter times one plus half plus quarter plus so on, which is at most, this sum, geometric series sums to at most two, so it's at most a half. So this is the probability that, that we got failure in the first n minus two steps. So the probability that we were independent in first n minus two equations is at least a half. But now we know that independently, if we succeeded in the first n minus two trials, that we'll succeed independently in the last trial with probability at least a half. And so, so the probability of success is at least the probability of succeeding in the first n minus two steps, which is a half, times the probability of succeeding in the last step, which is a half, and this product is at, le at least a quarter. So this is a simple argument without, without actually evaluating this series that the probability of success is at least a quarter, 0.25. Okay, it's slightly worse than this band, but it's much easier to prove. Okay, so, so putting it all together, this is what Simon's algorithm looks like. You start off with your inputs, input qubits in the state zero. You do a Hadamard transform. You compute F, do a Hadamard transform and measure, and that's it. This measurement gives you a linear equation on the S that S must satisfy. Repeat this process n minus one times, collect n minus one linear equations, solve them, and you find your secret string S.